In this video, we will see how to configure Spring in our application using just Java and without any XML configuration. We will take the example application we have developed before and configure Spring using Java. So let's get started. In the previous video, we saw how our Spring IOC container reads the configuration data from the XML file and creates the objects automatically. Now for the Java configuration, the only change is the Spring IOC container instead of reading the XML file will be reading from the Java configuration class. And personally, I'm not a big fan of using the XML configuration. Also in the real world projects, apart from some legacy old applications, all the newly developed applications in Spring uses Java configuration because it's much easier to understand as all the code and the configuration part will be in one programming language. Uh, that is Java. So you don't need to learn about what is XML and the other uh, XML namespaces, uh, etc. So let's go ahead and create our configuration class inside the root package of our project. I will right click and create a new class called as app config. And if you go back and look at the XML file, it's mainly made up of a bunch of bean tags. So the idea is to create a similar configuration also in our Java class. Now we have created the class and here we wanted to create the beans for our basic spell checker and advanced spell checker classes. We can do that by creating the following methods. I will type public basic spell checker and for the method name, I will give it as create basic spell checker. Inside this method, we just create a new basic spell checker and return that object. So if you think about it, that's what Spring Container is also doing for us in the XML configuration. It reads the bean tags and creates the objects for those bean definitions. But in the XML configuration, Spring understands that all the tags starting with bean contains the class definitions from which it can uh, create the objects. In the Java configuration, we have at bean annotation, which uh, takes care of this. So if you go back to our app config class, and add the add bean annotation on top of our create basic spell checker method. Spring understands that it is a bean definition and we will use the new object we are creating whenever it is needed. Here we can also provide a name for our bean. We can do that by adding a name property inside our bean annotation. And I will name our bean as basic spell checker. Let's do the same thing also for advanced spell checker and email client classes. I will add a create advanced spell checker method, which returns a new advanced spell checker. And let's add the add bean annotation also for this advanced spell checker. And add the name property as advanced spell checker. Now the same thing also for email client bean. And for the email client, we need to pass one of the spell checkers as the constructor argument. If you go back to the XML configuration, we were doing that using the constructor org tag. So in the Java configuration, we can just call one of these two bean methods and uh, then it will be passed into our uh, email client. Lastly, let's also add a bean annotation for, for our create email client method and name it as email client. So now we are ready to use this configuration class and pass it to the Spring container. We can go back to our email application class and inside the main method, you can see that before we were using the class path application, we can, before we were using the class path XML application context class because we wanted to use the XML configuration of course. Now we want to, now we don't need this XML configuration anymore. We have our new Java, Java class. So how we can tell to Spring container to use our new Java class instead of the XML. If you remember what I said in the previous video, application context is an interface and it has multiple implementations and class path XML application context is just one of the implementations of this interface. If you go inside the application context interface and click on the green button, just to the left side of the interface declaration, you can see all the classes which are implementing this interface. For our case, we can use the annotation config application context class. Let's see, let's go inside and see whether this supports our criteria or not. So if you have a look at the constructor here, 
it is taking a class as an argument and in the documentation it says that it reads the bean definitions from the class which is provided so this fits our criteria perfectly let's use this class inside the main method i will replace the class path xml application context with annotation config application context class and as a constructor argument i will provide the app config dot class and the rest of the code stays as it is so instead of previously providing the xml file we provide the app config class to the annotation config application context class let's run the application and you can see that you are able to see the log messages of the basic spell checkers check spelling method let's quickly change the email client bean definition to use the advanced spell checker and run the application again and now you can see that we are able to uh, see the log messages of the advanced spell checker check spelling method so this is just a small introduction of how to configure spring using java in the upcoming videos we will see how to use spring's java annotation in much more detail if you like this video do subscribe to my channel for more interesting tutorials i will see you in the next video